Welcome back to Jigger class and now we are looking at PSLE last minute revision for set number B. So before we dive into those questions, there's from 2024 other school prelim papers, we are, I wanted to invite you to actually first try out the questions in our Google Drive link that you actually can access in our description box. Okay, so let's look at this question together. So the first question here says that eight people share the cost of a meal equally. Now, the cost of the meal was divided by 6 instead of 8 by mistake. Yeah, I know, I know you guys would probably be saying that why they have made such mistake and now we need to bear the consequences, right? Okay. As a result, each of the 8 people pay $4 more than what they should have paid. What is the correct amount that each person should pay? Now, um, there are actually many methods to solve this question, but... The, the first impression, the first thoughts that came to my mind is to do this. I will assume, yeah, this, this is what came to my mind. I will assume maybe C as the cost of the meal, okay? Now, I know that the cost supposed to divide by what? Supposed to divide by 8, okay? Because to 8 person, right? But I accidentally, mistakenly, I divide by 6. And the amount that I have here, if I minus the amount that I should really pay, is actually what? Four more dollar more than that, right? So this is the equation that I've actually construct. Okay, so it's kind of simple. How do I minus these two fractions? I need to make sure the denominator is supposed to be the same. So 6 and 8, the LCM is actually 24. So I times 4 here, I times 4 here, I times 3 here, I times 3 here. So now it will become... 4c minus 3c divided by 6 times 4, 24, 8 times 3, 24. So I can combine them together as 4. So you can see now it became c over 24. Why? Because 4c minus 3c is c, right? Equal to 4. So how can I find what is c? c basically is I move the 24 up because divide will become times. So 4 times 24, it becomes 96. That basically tells you the cost of the meal is actually $96. And if I know $96 is the cost, then I suppose divide by what? 8. So the answer is what? The answer is $12. Okay? $12. That will be actually uh, the first thought I have when I was actually thinking of this question. And of course, there's, there's another way that if you prefer or you don't like this kind of like algebra kind of way. But I mean, for me, it's actually kind of easy. But if you would prefer a different way, is in this way. Example, as a result, right, each of eight people pay four more than what they should have paid. Means that mm, you want to tr probably try to find out A, eight people pay extra four more dollar. Then what is the extra cost? What's the extra that? It was a total extra that these people need to pay. Then you notice it's $32, right? And this extra is actually caused by what? Caused by the difference between this 8 and 6. Because 8 and 6, that's why it creates this such extra, right? So 8 minus 6 is equal to what? 2. So I use 32, divide by 2, and I actually found... 16 and this 16 is actually the cost that needs to pay by six six people if there's only six six people lah, okay means that this this part c divided by six is actually 16 okay means that if there's a cost i divide by six people it's supposed each of them should both pay 60 but of course this is not the exact amount so i need to times six to find back what is actually the total cost. So 16 times 6, um, 96, and that will be the total cost. And as what we have here, then I divide by E. Then I know the answer is uh, $12 in this case. So that is basically another way to actually solve this question, depending on which way that you actually prefer. Okay, so that is for the first question, and let's move on to the second question. Okay, the second question is from uh, Catholic High School. So here the question says that in the figure, 
ABCD is a square, AD equal to DF, ADF is 58 degree. Find angle BEF. So let's look at this uh, together. ABCD is a square, okay, I know. AD equal to DF. So since it's a square, so I know that all length here is supposed to be the same. And AD equal to DF, so I know here also will be the same. And this actually tells me that the length, the angle here and here is actually the same. Next, um, I know here is 58. Find angle BEF. Now, I'm looking for angle BEF, which is here. This is the angle that I'm looking for. Okay, so let me solve the first thing first. I know here is 58. These two are supposed to be the same. So I know that angle DAF, which is here, I'm supposed to use 180 degree minus 58 degree and divided by 2. And I know that will be equal to 61 degree. I mean, if you do it carefully, you should get 61. Which means that here is 61 degree. Here is 61 degree. Now, I know that actually BEF here right, is actually also the same as here. Why? Because it's just a X, right? X is the same. So, if you look carefully, here actually also form a... Form what? Form a triangle. But unfortunately, 58 is actually from here up to here. But what I want is actually from here only up to here. Then how to find the angle here? If you look carefully, interestingly, this line actually is what? Is actually half of the square. Half of the square means what? Half of the square means that if this is 90 degree, half of it will be 45. So here is actually 45 degree. So with that, I know that 1, 2, I just need to look for here, which is my final answer. So angle A, E, D, which is also the same as angle B, E, F. How do I look for it? I just use 180 minus 45 minus 61. And if you calculate it carefully, you should get the answer 74, which is answer option number 2. Simple, good. Okay, I think it's not an... Uh, it's actually an easy question, just you need to be very careful with the calculation. Let's move on to our next question. Okay, our next question um, is a paper 1 question, question 24. Okay, so let's, let's look at this question. A group of students took part in a math competition. 3 over 8 of the boys and 1 over 6 of the girls went to the final round of the competition. There were 60 students who went on the final round and 3 out of 4 of them were boys. What was the total number of students who took part in the competition? I mean, this is what I always prefer to do, which I actually like to do this. I write boys, I write girls. 3 out of 8 means that if I have 8 unit, I will have actually 3 unit went to the final round. Let me just write here, final. And of course, I know there's another 5 unit that actually not qualified. Lah. And for girls, I know I have 6. I cannot use the word unit because it's not exactly the same. I don't know whether this 8 unit and 6 unit is the same. Let me you are you V? V is a bit weird. Let me use W, lah, okay? 6 W. But uh, yeah, if you want to use P as part, also can. So 6 W. I know I have one W went to the final, and I know the rest of the five W actually does not qualify. Now, I know that there are 60 students in the final, and three out of four of them were actually boys. So I just 60 times three over four, and I know the boys in the final would be what? 60 divided by four, 15, 15 times three, 45. If boy is 45, then I also can calculate girls, right? Girls will be basically 60 minus 45, lah, and I know it's 15. Which means that this 3 unit is actually equal to what? 45. And I know also the same thing that this 1w is actually 15. Makes sense, right? 
So here is 15. So let me just do it here. If 3 unit is 45, then what is 8 unit? Hey, why am I looking for 8 unit? Because you're asking for what? Total number of students. So I want to find the total number of boys, find the total number of girls, and I add together. So 45, I divide by 3, I times 8. So if you calculate carefully, 15 times 8, you should get 1, 2, 0. Now, and I know 1W is equal to 15, and 6W will be equal to what? 15 times 6. So it will be equal to 90. And of course, the final step is use 120 plus 90, and that gives me 2, 1, 0, which is the final answer. Okay, I think kind of simple, but again, it, pref it depends on the way you prefer to solve this, but this is what I like to do, okay? Uh, it makes it clear, lah, okay? So, let me move on to the next question. Yes, the next question here. It says that in the figure below, rectangle EFGH has an area of 2250 cm squared. So, basically, the whole thing is 2250. And a triangle... MNH has an area of 750 cm square. So MNH has an area of 750 cm square. So MNH. So it's this, this region. Okay, let me just quickly color this. And I know this region is 750 cm square. And the question asks, find the area of the shaded triangle NFG, which is this part. Now, um, again, if you look carefully, you should know this question is testing the, your knowledge on properties of triangle. Again, the same thing like the previous set, set number A, properties of triangle. Now, if you look carefully, this region M -N -M -N -H and NGF, they actually, when their height is the same, yes, yeah, their height is the same, and their length at together is actually exactly the length of the rectangle, which means what? Which means that this blue color region, which I've shaded, at this shaded region, when they add together, it actually forms half of the rectangle. Basically, these two add together is exactly half of the rectangle. And I know the area of rectangle is what? 2, 2, 5, 0. Half of it is what? I divide by 2 and you should get uh, 1, 1, 2, 5. That is actually half of the rectangle. And I know one part is 7, 5, 0. Another part will be 1, 1, 2, 5 minus 7, 5, 0. And you should get uh, 3, 7, 5. And this is in cm squared. Okay. Simple, clear. Okay, I think this question should be a kind of a simple question for most of you, just to um, give you some idea again and remind you again on this properties of triangle. Okay, let's move on to our next question. And our next question is on ACS Junior. Okay, let's look at this question together. Team had a total of 754 pearl necklaces and beads necklaces for sales. After selling twice as many pearl necklaces as bead necklaces, she had 1 over 3 of the pearl necklaces and 1 over 4 of the bead necklaces left. What was the total number of pearl and bead necklaces left? Now, the reason I'm, I, selected, I selected this question is because most of this type of question, they will either tell you that, oh, the, the amount that actually being sold for this pearl and bead is actually the same. Or they either would like to tell you, oh, the leftover is actually the same. In that case, there will be equal concept. But interestingly, this question, they use the word twice as many pearl as beads. It means that it's a bit out of norm. Lah, okay? That's why I select like this question. Let me just write here so P, uh, B. Let me just indicate it as P, pearl, beads. And total. Now, uh, let me just write here say at first, then soul, then left. I mean, I like to contract here, but it makes it clear. So you see, 
I have 754 total at first. I sold one, okay, I have, I sold twice as many. Then I have one over three left and one over four left. But I know what, the pull must be twice, right? So you see, means that if I sold, if I left with one over three, means I sold how many? I will actually sold two out of three. If I left with one over four, means I sold how many? Three out of four. Is that correct? Does it make sense? I left with one over three, means I sold two over three. I left with one over four, that means I sold three over four. But again, the keyword here is, I sold twice as many pearl as bits. Means that what I sold here, this part, let me just highlight this, this two, so basically double of this, eh? But this two is three, double. So double of three is what? Double of three is six. So here's supposed to be six, but here is not six. So what I'm, what should I do? Just make it become six. So I times three, I times three. So now it will become what? Six out of nine. Does it make sense now? Yeah, three, two times, like twice. I sold twice. And now six means the six unit I sold. Nine means what? Nine means what? The total. Means that out of nine unit, I sold six unit. So I just write here. Out of nine unit, I sold six unit. Correct. Then I left with now how many unit? Three unit. Out of four unit, I sold three unit. Now I left with how many unit? One unit. Now from here is very clear. Nine unit plus four unit, it gives you what? Seven five four. Three unit plus one unit, it gives you what? Four unit. Okay? So now I know that nine unit plus four unit is equal to seven five four. So add together is what? Thirteen unit. If 13 unit is 754, then 1 unit is equal to what? Press on your calculator and you should get uh, 58. Okay? And the question now asks, what was the total number of pearl and bits and glasses left? How many unit? 4 unit. So 4 unit is equal to 58 times 4, 232. Yes, and that would be your final answer. Easy, right? This is something that I prefer to do. Again, it depends on your choice. As long as you prefer the method that you use, make sure you write clearly, then you should be fine. Okay, so let's continue with our next question. Okay, our next question is from Nanyang. Okay, so let's look at this question. At first, Wei Liang had 360 more stickers than Vikram. Wei Liang gave 3 out of 8 of his stickers to Su, and Vikram gave 1 over 4 of his stickers to Su. In the end, Wei Liang had 159 more stickers than Vikram. How many stickers did Vikram have at first? So, um, again, this is what I would prefer to do. I would prefer to first write Wei Liang. And this is Vikram, WLV. And I'll draw a unit here. I have 360 more than him. So, I mean, that makes sense, right? Means that this unit and this unit are the same, but this is 360 more than him, okay? Now, William gave 3 out of 8 of his stickers to suit. Means that out of 8 unit, if here is a unit, here will be what? A unit. Out of 8 unit, I will give how many away? 3 unit, so I minus 3 unit. And 3 over 8 of 360 is what? Let me just calculate here. 360 times 3 over 8. Press the calculator, 360 times 308. You're supposed to get uh, 135. Means that out of 360, I give up how many? 135. Make sense? Then, Wilkram give what? 1 over 4. Eh? Out of 8 unit, here is out of 4 unit. So I just times 2, lo, make it the same. So I know it's 2 out of 8. Means that out of 8 unit, I give away 2 unit. Now, with that, what is the leftover? 8 unit minus 3 unit, 5 unit. 360 minus 135, 2, 2, 5. 
8 unit minus 2 unit, 6 unit. Okay, so this is basically what I have now. 5 unit plus 2 to 5, 6 unit. But the questions continue to say is what? In the end, Wei Liang had 159 more stickers than Wilkram. This amount, 5 unit, 2 to 5, is actually 159 more than here. Uh, in that case, what can I actually do? I actually can say this. 5 unit plus 2 to 5. If I minus the way 159, because I have more than that, right? So if I minus, it will be the same as what Wilkram have. Does it make sense? This have 159 more than him. So I'll just minus 159 from here so that it will be equal. Okay? Or you can another way you can say since this is 159 more than we more than uh, we will crumb, I can add 159 so that these two will be equal. I mean both we are the same. With that, I actually can do what? I actually can uh, combine these two together and I actually can move this through to that side. Why? I let 5 unit go and look for 6 unit. So 225 minus 159. If you press on calculator, you get what? 66. And 5 unit, if I go there, will become minus 5 unit. So 6 unit minus 5 unit, you become what? 1 unit. And I know 1 unit is equal to 66. Now the question now asks, how many stickers did Wilkram have at first? Which one? This one, right? Eight unit, right? So if one unit is 66, eight unit is 66 times eight, which is 528. That would be your final answer. Okay? So again, it is very similar to the previous question, but uh, in it's a bit different in nature. Yeah. So I hope this question really helps you and gives you some idea. Because actually it's very common to see this kind of question. And this is actually considered as a bit easier around, around this time. Okay. Now let's move on to our next question. And I think this will be our last question or so. Okay. So this question is actually a volume question, a volume of water question. Now, figure one shows the amount of water in rectangular tank P at first. Okay. P at first. Interestingly, this is Q in the end, okay? Now, Raj pour 1 over 3 of the water from tank P into tank Q, okay? And figure 2 shows the amount of water in tank Q in the end. What was the height of the water level in tank Q at first? Okay, this is in the end. So it means that I take out 1 over 3 of the water from here, figure 1, tank P, then I pour inside tank you and this is what I have in the end correct make sense okay so in that case I want to find out what is the amount of water that I pour inside so if I want to find the amount of water I pour from P to Q I will do this one third of what I have inside, right? So one third of what I have inside. So how to calculate the volume of water inside? I'll find the, the height of the water, no, it's not the tank, the height of the water times the length times the breath, right? So times 24 times 20 times 18. Okay, I, I think that makes sense. One third of the amount of water. So I just put everything inside in calculator and you should get to eight eight zero cm cube. Okay, there's a water that I pour inside. However, after I add it in, this is the amount of water we have. So if I want to find what is the original amount of water inside, means that uh, volume of uh, of water in Q at first. What do I need to do? I need to find the volume of water here now, then minus 2880. So how to find the volume of water I have now? So 16.2 times 25 times 16. 
this is the amount of water I have in the end, then I minus the amount of water I pour inside, 2880. Then you just press in your calculator, 16.2 times 25 times 16, want to find out, then minus 2880. And you should get 3600 cm3. So this is the volume of water at first. Now, if I know this is the volume of, volume, volume of water at first, then how do I find the height? I know I just need to divide by the base area here. So the height at first, very simple, that will be equal to 3600 divided by 25 divided by 16. So if you're pressing calculator, you should get 9, and this is in CM. And that will be part A. Okay, I think kind of simple. Just a bit tricky part is that it gives you 30 CM instead. Yeah, I think I think you should not get tricked on this, okay? Now, let's look at question B. Let's look at question B. So question B is asking, what was the percentage increase in the volume of water in tank Q? Let me just scroll up here since I know the question already. Now, B is asking for percentage increase. Now, um, this is in your chapter 4, I think, asking for percentage increase. Now, what is the formula of percentage increase? Something you should know, the amount of increase divided by the original amount times 100%. And you should know how this percent you should not add in into the calculator. Why? Because your final answer ends with a percent. And this should be kept there. Okay, you just press it times 100, that's all. So now, with that, what is the amount of increase? Amount of increase basically means what? The amount of water that I pour inside. So that's what? 2880 cm3. So that is my amount of increase. So let me just write here. 2880. Then what is my original amount? My original amount is this. The volume of water in Q at first. 3600. So I should write here 3600. Then I suppose to do what? Times 100 percent. Okay, so this press your calculator 2880 divided by 3600. You should get 0 0.8. Then again, do not put the percent inside, just times 100. Times 100. And you should get the answer 80 percent. That is your final answer. Okay, so um, again, I think we have come to the end of this set B. I think it's kind of easy, it's not that difficult, but definitely it's worth for us to revise this. Okay, again, I hope you learned something today and that's all from this video. I think it's good just to keep on revise as you are approaching the PSME for math. Okay, that's all. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.